What a great example of how it's possible with just a change in attitude and a little thought to live the good life. Same money, different style. Remember, the challenge is to get joy from your life and what you have to share. It's not the amount that counts. It's the uniqueness, the love, and the attitude that counts. Even people of modest means can experience a sophisticated lifestyle. They simply learn to save up some of their Pepsi money for a bottle of fine wine. Don't spend all your money a quarter at a time. Save up and buy something of special value, something fine, or something that lasts, or something you are proud of, or a gift of value to give to someone special. Even with modest means, you can save your candy money for a concert. And for a sophisticated person, a few may be better than many. Better a few treasures than a house full of junk. Lifestyle is a matter of awareness, values, education, and disciplined taste. It is an art that brings joy as its practice, not just a subject to be studied. It is the deliberate decision to savor and enjoy all the experiences and possibilities of life. What can you do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? Good question. What can you do with economic chaos, massive disappointment? What can you do with a broken heart? What can you do when it won't work? Good question. So if I had a word with you tonight, one-on-one, -on -one, just you and me, I think my personal advice to you would be, this year, 1981, reach down inside of you and come up with some more of those remarkable human gifts. They're there, waiting to be utilized. And then change anything for you you want to change. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. If you don't like how it is for you, change it. If it doesn't suit you, change it. If it doesn't please you, change it. If it isn't enough, change it. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. See, you don't ever have to be the same again after tonight, only by choice. Now that we've feasted on the philosophical side, the theory side of the fundamentals, let me encourage you to participate in what should always follow any feast, and that is activity, exercise, and effort. In this case, the active and intense application of all that we've learned and shared together. I want to appeal to you right now to go to work. I appeal to you to review your associations with those people around you. I appeal to you to set your goals, to begin the quest for developing yourself, and to embark on a journey leading to your own financial independence by following a well-defined plan. I appeal to you to enjoy your life as you seek to improve it. I give to you my strong appeal to seek knowledge so that your value to yourself and to others might increase. And finally, I appeal to you to discipline yourself for the control and management of the precious commodity of which we are granted only a limited amount, time. Whatever your skill set is now, whatever your vision of yourself is now, you can change it. You can become anything you want to be. But life is going to ask you one simple question. What price are you willing to pay to get there? And I'm going to cut to the chase for all of you and you're going to mistake what I'm about to say for good news. And then I'm going to tell you why it's actually the worst thing I could tell you. You all meet minimum requirements. You all meet minimum requirements. So whatever it is you want to do, I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy for you because you're ultra smart or something. You probably aren't. But everyone that I've encountered here, literally, without exception, every single person that has come up to me and said something, you meet minimum requirements. Even you awkward that have a hard time, like making eye contact. Even you guys, I'm telling you right now, you've got some shit you're going to have to deal with, but you meet minimum requirements. Now, minimum requirements for what? For whatever you want. But I'm telling you right now, you're not defined by who you are. You're defined by who you want to become and the price you're willing to pay to get there. If you go at something and you fail and you're an achiever, you don't fail. You go, I learned something, I'll just try something else. Right. I'm going to still get there. But when you succeed and you're not happy, you're technically screwed. Right. <laughs> it's just like, what are you going to do?
Most small businesses don't have those resources. They have to make up with it with an extraordinary product that meets the needs and they got to make up with it by finding a way to do value added marketing so that people say, this is someone I want to do business with. You can blow out a Nike if you can create a direct relationship with a consumer and you can do that today because of social media and because of the impact of social media when you serve people. I had no idea how I was going to pull it off. I was absolutely terrified. Every time I looked in the mirror, I saw me staring back and I knew how lazy I was. I knew how afraid I was. I knew how insecure I was. I knew that at my core, I wanted people to like me and I was terrified that they had every reason in the world not to like me. But instead of becoming someone who was worthy of self-respect, who was worthy of their respect, all I was trying to do was campaign. I was trying to posture. I was trying to create the illusion that I was something because that seemed like I could do it fast instead of just buckling down and doing the hard ass work of becoming somebody new. And I will make you guys one promise right here today. The game you're playing, please listen to this so that you don't end up wasting years of your life like I did mine. The game that you're playing is not success. The game that you're playing is not money. The game that you're playing is brain chemistry. It's about fulfillment. I believe that it's something that can be trained and I believe it's something that you have to take responsibility for. Mm. The world around you is never going to be fully peaceful ever. Even if there was world peace, you would still not have peace with a little argument with your partner mm -hmm. or a little issue at work. Like there's, that's never gonna disappear. Mm -hmm. So the desire for everything around you to be calmed is a wishful thought that doesn't have an end. Mm -hmm. Whereas the feeling of wanting to create calm and peace within is very realistic. And the point is that that peace is always gonna get triggered. And I think that's the mistake we make. We're looking for this perfect, consistent, never touched definition of peace. Mm -hmm. Whereas peace is something you're constantly training yourself to look for. So what I would say is that people should try and find the one activity they have in their day that brings them peace. Your shadows, your destructive side, those things that you have shoved down in your deep, dark unconscious, oftentimes contain the greatest gifts. Love your destructive side. Accept your destructive side. Remember that it is equal in part to your light side and it will always be there.